Hello guys, welcome to the next video tutorial on Android SQLite database tutorial for beginners. In the last video, we have seen how to insert data into SQLite database using Android. In this video, we will see how we can get all data from SQLite database table and show it on your Android. So let's get started. First of all, what we are going to do is we are going to take a button and this button we are going to use to view all data so I'm going to change the text as view all and the button ID um, I'm also going to change as button now once our button is uh, created what we are going to do is we are going to create a method to get all the table data so we are going to go to our database helper class which we have developed in the last videos and inside this database helper class what we are going to do is we are going to create a new method and this method we are going to call it as get all data which will be a public method and it's going to return a class or instance of a class called cursor and this cursor class we will see uh, what this is but let's create our method first so get all data and it's not going to take any argument for now and inside we will uh, write a query to get all the data now this cursor will show some error so you just need to press alt enter to import the class which is cursor class and now what we are going to do is we are going to create the instance of database class just as we have done in the last video you can just copy this uh, first line from the function insert data from the last video and paste it in this new function and then we will create an instance of a cursor class so this is our cursor class and we will name it as for for example res for result and then we will uh, take an instance of our database and then we will call a raw query on this database so raw query and if you uh, know how to query uh, SQLite database you may know how to query uh, all the data from the table so this is a simple uh, query I'm going to write which is select all asterisk stands for all right from your table so our table name is table name itself which we have defined in the last video so plus table name and then it takes an argument which we are going to pass it as null for now and now we just need to return the instance of this uh, cursor which is res right so return res now you may be wondering what this cursor class does you can uh, press control and click on this cursor and you will uh, reach to this uh, cursor class and this cursor class is an interface which provides the random read write access to your result okay so you can see here we are querying the database and the result we are storing it in this uh, cursor instance and using this we have the access to our data right so our get all data is created now we are going to go to our main activity uh, dot java class and in here first of all we will create the variable for view all button right if you remember we have created this view all button so we will create an instance for this here so and now we will cast this button now once we have casted our button we can use this button object to call set on click listener right let's create a method so it will be a public method and we will say this will return nothing and we will name it as 
view all method it takes no arguments and in here we can call the object of our view all button and then we can call set on click listener set on click listener and inside this we will create a new on click listener and when this button is clicked we want to perform some action right so what we are going to do here is we are going to uh, get all the data using this function which we have just created which is get all data right so we will use the instance of our database helper class which is my db which we have created dot get all data right and we are going to uh, save it in the cursor because it returns an object of cursor right now this has uh, some properties this object have some properties if we call this object and we can get the count of the lines so get count and this is the result count we are getting if this is equal to zero then it means that there is no data available for us right from this uh, get all data by querying to the database and then we have to show some message so right now i'm just uh, writing a comment and we are going to create a method for showing message in uh, some moment and then we are going to return if there is no result then we are going to show error and return otherwise if there is some result then we are going to uh, create some um, string buffer and then we are going to display this uh, data so we are going to create an instance of string buffer and we will name it as buffer is equal to new string buffer and then we are going to uh, get all the data one by one using this res object and how we can do it we can uh, use a while loop and as a condition of this while loop we can take this res object and we can call a method move to next so dot move to next and it moves your cursor to the next result okay and then we are going to get this uh, result and we will store it in the buffer right so buffer dot append and in this uh, buffer we can append the result okay and how we can uh, append this we can write the name of our column so our first column name was id and then this colon and then plus we will use this uh, res object and then we are going to get the string so get string and then we will pass an index of the column and index of the column starts from zero and if you remember our table was containing four columns one was id second was name third was surname and fourth was mark so index of id will be zero index of uh, name will be one index of uh, surname will be two and index of uh, marks will be three okay so that's what we are going to do so index of id is zero that's why we are go giving here zero and then we can just give or change the line to next and we will do the same for the other columns also so and the index of name was one index of surname was two and index of marks is three and let's uh, give double line break to the last uh, column so that when uh, next data is printed it's printed after a line break and then we want to show all the data so let's write a comment 
So let's create a new method which will be also a public method and it will return nothing. So void and uh, the method name will be show message. It's going to take two argument. First is the title and second is the message itself. Okay, so string message. And in here we are going to create an instance of alert dialog builder. So just write alert dialog dot builder and we will name it as builder is equal to new alert dialog dot builder and it takes the argument which is the context so this itself and using this builder we can uh, create a alert dialog okay so we can uh, set our title and set message using this builder to alert dialog so let's create first of all let's use this builder to uh, set cancelable so set is as cancelable so that uh, we can cancel it after its use and then we will uh, set the title so builder dot set title and uh, title will be the title which we get from this argument and then we will set the message so builder dot set message and message will be this message which we will get in the argument okay and then we can just call show method on this uh, builder this will show our dialog okay dialog or alert dialog so let's just copy this so show message function here and first of all if uh, no data is found what we are going to do is we are going to show some message so the title of this message box will be error and we will display nothing found or you can say no data found okay and when the data is found in here we can just show some message that uh, data the dialog title and the second argument will be the buffer and we need to convert this buffer into the string so just call to string on it okay and now our code is done one more thing which remains is we need to call this view all method inside our on create method so just copy this view all method and paste it inside your on create method of your main activity okay now let's run our program so our app is running now and when we click this view all button we will be able to see the data so right now we only have uh, one student data so it's showing id1 and name uh, surname and age and we can add some more data for the student and let's add this second student data here and I'm going to click this add data button and data is inserted and now view all the data and now we have two student data ID 1 and ID 2 okay so in this way you can uh, insert some more data and then using this view all button you will be able to see all the uh, data here so I hope you have enjoyed this video please rate comment and subscribe and bye for now